Okay, so I've got my board. Hopefully this got just a bit of muck on it. Um, but everything's prepared for the drawing. I've, as I said, I've got and it's divided by four by four, and then it's some smaller squares. So each of these large orange rectangles is six by six, so it's sort of twenty-four across. But that was all on my previous video. So now I'm just gonna I'll draw an outline. I'm gonna use I've got a sort of just a, a dark red pencil and a dark red crayon. So let's just start. I'll try and talk as I'm working. Otherwise, I might just have to add a voiceover because uh, sometimes it's just hard to concentrate. So I usually just choose uh, something um, you know that makes sense where I can see just an intersection between uh, this line, uh, I've got this orange square, uh, and um, I'm just going to call them squares actually. <laughs> I think that's just easier. Uh, so the orange square and just this uh, top one here, that's just the bra, it's just her forehead just coming through. So all the time I'm just thinking, is it towards the middle of the center and um, so I'm just that bit I'm just going to make up so it's approximately one across and then you see I've just drawn I've just drawn one in there just to help and then going up anyway somewhere around there but I'll just worry about that in a bit so it comes through like so and then approximately starts this just curve around roughly around the middle of this but it absolutely meets this corner um, just on this intersection here so it just goes down just slightly below the line and then again curves around but it's uh, where it intersects this line it's got to be at least three quarters of the way down so it's around there and then it intersects the next line just I'd say just below the halfway point and then through so they've got to just be consistent so I'm just trying to follow the line and um, you know it cuts through here at about halfway and then here at about a third of the way down just this. So I'm just always making these sorts of um, observations or these decisions as I work when I'm using a grid. Okay, it's about here. Again, it's just a bit. Um, the resolutions, as I said, I'm not going to complain about it, but it's not that great. So sometimes it's difficult to perceive it, but it'd be enough. So now we're entering this next rectangle. I can definitely see that just about here it intersects. So I might just have to, you know, when I've got it without the grid, maybe the grid's actually a hindrance here, and because of the low pixelation, I can't actually quite make out where it's going. But I've got it approximately, and that'll be enough. And so it definitely starts to go under this line around here. This is the line of the chin. Um, we'll just see what this feels like in a bit so and then the chin itself curves curls around just sort of here uh, it might be a bit much but we'll see this is all these are all things that you can create correct later on so into the fourth one actually I've got that wrong so it's third starts to curve around it's still going there and then up here and then actually that's a good one because it just intersect definitely intersecting um, between um, this the fifth across and the second up so and then I'm just going to go up here a bit and then it, the chin actually tapers off around there so it's going to be quite large actually looking at it Sometimes it's difficult to imagine what it'll be like. Okay, so when we've got to there, that should be sort of it's absolutely here, and then um, curls back in. Actually, it's curling, yeah, so from just above the next white rectangle or orange here. Um, 
so that's uh, and, uh, and then you've got the ear so the ear and it follows this line up and then just goes above it like something like that just coming across there and then disappears up something like that anyway you know we'll see she looks like Dr Spock at the moment but uh, of course we will rectify <coughs> something like that anyway so it's just quite random. We're just trying to get every line in, all the information that we need before we start doing the grizz eye. So some of these lines will just indicate the outline, the outline of the eyebrow, for example. And I'm sort of probably working quite well. It's, this is sort of normal speed, really, but you know. Um, quicker than I might uh, just for the sake of brevity because it's a video so you can see the nose I'm just going to check so it's definitely four across and three up so I'm just always making those sorts of checks and then we're going to go and it definitely goes so it's over halfway across and then it's literally it joins here this is the sort of nose just curving around so it's definitely before this bottom line and it actually makes it through into the next one and then it's quite close to this edge just way around there so suddenly it looks a bit like a face okay so in here I've got the lid this probably needs to be a bit further over I just have to remember that and that's something I'll adjust with the grizz eye difficult to work out. I've got my iPad next to me. I've just I've obviously got a split screen here but um, my iPad would just be either on an easel next to me or just propped up on this easel but again just so that the image that you're looking at isn't too messy I've just um, done a split screen. So that's just the whole of the outline of uh, the eyelash. That's sort of a guess really and so you can see that two in from this orange line and down that's just that's where this brow so actually cuts in just a tiny bit and then it makes it up past here sort of straight just ever so slightly above So you've got to be careful when you're making these outlines that suddenly you're going to put too much emphasis and then when you start blocking it in, um, it's quite, uh, you just, it's, the drawing isn't right. So it's just, you know, all I'm doing is indicating even though uh, the suggestion of the eyebrow is really quite slight, uh, just, I have to show it. It's just sort of going to be a guideline for the grizz eye, which will, you know, um, so we're just going to continue with that. So, um Hope all of this makes sense anyway. And this is like right up. Definitely makes it to there. Again, there's just a shadow actually under the eyelid, but it's quite clearly defined and it follows this arc around here. So 
the lip just so it's definitely passing here not quite a third but over halfway and then just here this is all in shadow really and then you've just got the line of her cheek and then this is the lower lip just suggested and then, uh, and then meeting so probably just over halfway and then from this corner you can't actually it's going that's the sort of emphasis up. so that's the top lip it's roughly right and then thinking about it just while I'm here the shoulder is going to come down wait Just check that in a second. And actually, it ends up so one and then another. I'm just going to do it and then so it intersects about a three up, so it's roughly like so. That's okay. And just check that actually, it's going and then it bulges out just a bit. And the other shoulder while we're doing shoulders just above this, below this line here and then it actually follows it along and just dips off slightly okay um, so just checking where I am so do that. Approximately one square and then something like this. But it's sort of um, this, oh, hang on, this kind of length down. So it's crossing the middle line and it goes down. And then it crosses this line halfway. Something like that, but I'll change it. And then this is halfway as well. Okay, and then um, this is halfway actually. I'm not too fussed about um, things like that, that's okay, you know, I'm just creating an impression and I just want to learn something about the glazing, so, you know, in terms of a copy, I'm not going to be too fussy. So, uh, one, two across, that's something like that. But maybe it's easier to just work down from here, so it goes like that, like that. And then we're in the third one. Okay, that'll do. And then where this intersects, so it just starts to come up here. Here. Um, and this is, I know what he's done just for the edge, it's just a really really thin glaze of black so um, that's going to be really enjoyable but so as I said you know because it's just a very very thin layer I don't you know, want to get too um, caught up with following this you know when I start to block in later but it's just a sort of guideline so I can get an idea so on the fourth one it goes it's just like that so it's just joining the dots really. It's 
straight along roughly and then up to there and then sort of here come back from the ear actually now just inside there's a sort of slight suggestion of a sideburn and then And I'll have to look, you know, without the grid again, I'll just look because I know that, you know, there are definitely modulations in the hair and, um, you know, there's uh, suggestions of the shape of the hair. So, but I'll just have to see later with hopefully, you know, better image. If I can get hold of a better image anyway, I might, I'll, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll have a go, uh, I'll have a look at that. Um, right, just inside the ear. So, where are we? So, two up from there. Over halfway up. something like that so um, I was zooming in before and with a low resolution it all gets a bit fuzzy so now I've um, come out again and just have a check it's definitely pretty, pretty close um, it's also good to just very good Sorry, I didn't check, didn't say this before, but you know, just to check angles and things like that, you know, because that can get lost sometimes using a grid, but you still need to get a sense of the face. And the angles of the face. It's just a shadow around here, which I'd, I'm just going to indicate, but it's probably better just to look again when I'm doing the grizz eye. And again, there's more, there's a shadow just suggesting the brow there. Well, that's not very helpful to do that, but anyway. all a bit dark here, all a bit hard to see. Working from life is so much nicer but it takes longer and as I've said before you know, a grid is purely a time-saving device and nothing more than that. It's, it's definitely not the only way to make a painting and nine times out of ten I'd rather, well ten times out of ten <laughs> I'd rather work from life. I did a portrait from life the other day and uh, again just you could just see so much more uh, just in terms of the skin tones and I don't necessarily think you need to be um, in someone's presence to get a feel of what their life is like because everything's there in an image of them but it's so much easier so much more helpful. I 
it's doing these. So everything's very, very subtle and that's just not going to change as we progress right through to the final glazes, there'll still be drawing going on. But for now it's sort of a rough outline. Uh, so as I said, you know, there's, um, I'm trying to sort of modulate the line here, but it's possibly easier to do that with a brush. And in, as I draw in the grisaille, it's, this is just sort of a rough outline and I've tried to adhere as closely as I possibly can to the grid so that I know um, that when I come to paint the grisaille, I've made those checks. So I don't need to worry about that. And uh, sometimes, you know, I will go back over it and I'll show various ways of checking it later. But, you know, we're talking about um, a margin of sort of, you know, if you can get it like 90% right, 95% right, which it sort of is, uh, that should be enough to work with. Um, and so the next stage is the grisaille, which I'll show you next. <laughs> 